In this elvish sheath dwells the blade that was broken and has been made again. Talcar first wrought it in the deeps of time. Death shall come to any man that draws Elendil's sword save Elendil's heir. Hey everyone, Yoisin here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we'll be exploring the crafts of the dwarves, and more specifically the weapons and armor that the dwarves forged, and the best of such artifacts. For more information, please check out the articles and videos in the cards and description. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's begin our tale. Dwarves were, of course, renowned for their axes and hammers. Likely this was due to their stature and so forth, making weapons such as swords rather unwieldy in comparison for most dwarves, but certainly not all. And this did not mean that dwarves never crafted other weapons such as swords or spears, for they did, and they were some of the best weapons one could ask for besides those of great elven quality. Someone named King Bladderthin, who ruled some realm or another in the Third Age, once ordered thrice-forged spears from the dwarves of Erebor. Some of the best axes in Middle-earth came from the great dwarven realms wherein the most renowned smiths did their work. Cities such as Nogrod and Belagost in the Elder Days, Khazadum and Erebor in later ones, manifested some incredible weapons and armor. Speaking of armor, dwarves were well known to wear bulky plated heavy armor but could also wear things such as chainmail or leathers and hides and so forth. If given the right materials, they could make the greatest armor that the world had ever known. Mithril, such as that which was found in khazad allowed dwarves to create light, unpierceable chainmail, just as the one we saw Bilbo and Frodo wear that was once made for an elven prince. Now, whether or not they forged multiple versions of such armor in the many years past, I am unsure. But it is certainly possible, and I would say even likely, that since they made this as a gift for an elf, their own dwarvish princes and kings probably had similar armor. Besides this, the most respected dwarf blacksmith, perhaps of all time, Telkar, forged the Dragonhelm, which would be gifted and regifted from dwarf to elf, from elf to elf, and eventually it came to Hador, the house of men in Dor Lomen, in the fiefdom of Hithlum as it was large, almost too large even for a dwarf, and it was really difficult and heavy to wear, as it was plated and had an ornate dragon upon its top, therefore it was regifted many times. However, the house of Hador was full of men tall and strong, and they made great use of it. There were other masks similar to this helm that could protect against a dragon's fire, but these were really only made and used in the first age. This same dwarf made the sword Narsil as well. Unless Telkar was a shared name with some other dwarf, but I do doubt this. Much may be said of Narsil's lineage, and its reforged self, Andril, and I go more into detail concerning it in my video about this sword. But for what I'll say here, Narsil was perhaps another creation that came through Thingol's line to Elros and eventually onto Elendil, but I am unsure. It was a beautiful and powerful sword, one of the most renowned in the entire world that shone with the light of the sun and moon, and it would be broken by Sauron, only to be reforged by the elves of Enladris an age later. Narsil and then Andril is truly a unique symbol of friendship, as it was forged by dwarves, reforged by elves, and carried by men. I really enjoy that aspect of it, and find that the elves probably improved upon the already great work of the dwarves. Telkar also forged the knife that Baron used to cut the Silmaril from the crown of Morgoth. Yet after the first Silmaril was cut out of his crown, the knife was either weakened by the craft of Feanor or pressed in a weakening way that broke it as it shattered and a sliver of this knife actually pierced the face of the Dark Lord. Perhaps Telkar also wrought the knife that his lord and king Azakal would use to stab the dragon Glaurong during the Battle of Unnumbered Tears, which is yet another feat to boast of as a blacksmith. Moving now to some other dwarven weapons, at some point, an axe was forged for one of the Durans of khazad -dûm. Since this was the axe of the king, one could imagine it would be made out of the best materials available. And since this was in khazad the greatest of materials found here was Mithril. It is said too that the axe of Durin was found and then lost by Balin's company, when they too were forsaken. The Lord of the Rings Online runs with this idea making a very important story element, this mithril axe of Durin. Finally, while there are more dwarves, especially in the late Third Age like Gimli, who probably carried some great weapons in their own right, one of the last notable named weapons that was forged by the dwarves was the red axe carried by Dane Ironfoot, 
which he used to behead the orc chieftain Azog during the War of the Dwarves and Orcs. He continued to use the axe all the way until his death during the Battle of Dale. Likely, as his axe was more of a symbol of Dane than anything, it would pass on to his own descendants, Thorin III Stonehelm, and so forth, likely becoming a symbol of the house of the King of the Dwarves. While all of the works of the dwarves were noteworthy and rather amazing, especially by the standards of men, these are the weapons and armor, and the greatest of them forged by the dwarves. I hope to continue to explore other works of dwarves and the other races in future videos. And so we come to the end of our tale. From the weapons and armor of the dwarves, we see that we must equip ourselves adequately, and take time to invest in ourselves to truly show the virtue of our hearts and the strength of our arms. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts on the weapons and armor of the dwarves in the comments below, and if you'd like to see more videos like this. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider getting some candles from our friends Mythology Candles, or order some Weta or United Cutlery Lord of the Rings sword statues and other replicas from Castle Khan, who does international shipping and use the code WEST at checkout. And please check out our merch and Patreon. Thanks to our Val Archer patrons and YouTube members, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Molly Sullivan, Blair Scout, Merton, John Hume, Sam McBee, Matt Sabatch, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Anthony Harmon, Dorwin Gray, Arthur Merlin, Dale Davis, Kingswald Project, Robert Bogue, and King of Games 2500. Thank you so much to all of our patrons and YouTube members. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today. And I'll see you all again next week with a video on why did Eru intervene with Numenor, but not with Morgoth. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.